did God reveal language to, uh, uh, to man as he revealed Quran, the Holy Quran, to just one man, or did he reveal it to several men so that they could all talk to each other? He could not. I think he could, but he may not have taught the language together to so many people. He must have taught, I believe, to a chosen servant of his. The language which was taught to him at an age where he was to be married and grow children and he could teach that language to his children and he must have been a leader of a tribe to whom he could teach further this language. So the language was not directly revealed to everybody because we know this is not the custom of Allah to commune with everyone directly. One trusted servant is chosen by him, like in the case of all prophethood, wherever it appears. One man is chosen. Although the phenomenon of revelation is also experienced by others to give support to that one man. So that might have happened. But the language, I believe, according to the process of prophecy, as we see manifest itself in the history of religion, language must have been taught to one man. And from him it may have spread to his children, as I have just told you, and also through to the tribe of which he must have been a leader, a sort of leader. He must have been respected by them so that he could teach them this language. Because language to be taught separately and for them to get together to speak that language, that is inconceivable. Right? Mm. And this is a very interesting question. And uh, I think I should give more answer to the question than actually you wanted to know. Because this question is related to a sign of the existence of God. There are two theories that man was created blindly by such forces of nature who had no mind. Yet through selective processes, animals were advanced in species and gradually all their organs came into being and so on and so forth. Now, on that I have already written, a ch included a chapter in my book specifically to rebut these things. But here I, will, I would like to say something more which you should understand and all who listen to us should understand. The gap between animal, the animal kingdom and man, and as far as the language goes, is so big that no graduation of learning of language can be shown by the scientists. The gap is so big that it defies the theory of evolution in that respect. Because if man had evolved to learn a language, any language, then we must have been able to see a long trail behind humans of animals gradually learning their languages and developing them until man was able to put, to take it forward. Like in every knowledge, every branch of knowledge, he has advanced more rapidly than other animals. So it is possible, I mean, theoretically, hypothetically, it is possible that if man had evolved, the language should also have evolved along with the animals. But there is no sign of any evolution 
in learning of languages in the animal kingdom. Such far and wide, those animals who have learned to express themselves in some manner, they learnt it right from the most ancient samples of those animals. From the right from the most ancient times, because when we examine the ancient specimens of those animals, they have, the, they have exactly the same means of expressing themselves. And this is a universal habit. Lions from Africa, lions from Sundarban of Bangladesh, they speak exactly the same language. Crows of Pakistan, I'm not talking of mullahs. <laughs> the crows of Pakistan <laughs> speak exactly the same language as the crows of England do. Go to any island, any country, any continent, go to north and south, wherever an animal is found, he will stick to the same habits of expressing himself. Where do you find any sign of evolution of language in these things? The honeybee. Right from the most ancient times, because it is recorded that that, honey, that honeybee is able to express herself far more clearly than any other animal in the world. But our expressions are fixed. There is no evolution in those expressions. Honeybee of a hundred thousand years ago used to use exactly the same expressions as the honeybee of today. The things which honeybee has learned must have learned from God, who etched these exceptional qualities into her so that she could express herself like no other animal in the world could. It is just an insect and no evolution. The honeybee, when are, are, they are divided into different uh, groups, categories, worker honeybees and this honeybee and that honeybee, soldier honeybees, the queen and those who help her, they are all differently uh, they are made in the same way, but they are differently characterized. The character and the style of life given to them is different from each other. They perform different functions. And in the performance of those functions, you see some fantastic things, which cannot be found in any other animal of the whole world, in the whole world. For instance, when a honeycomb, the, honey col the colony of honeybees is about to swarm, when they have to leave the previous place where they had built their honeycomb and they want to go to some other place, it doesn't happen like just haphazardly. Every honeybee is flying around here and there and seeing which place would be, and then how would they discuss that? How would they know her version is better than the others, and so on and so forth? They keep sitting at the same place, along with the honeybee. Not one moves, except those worker honeybees who specific task it is to find out a good site. They spread out and watch for each site. Now when they return, there may be hundreds or thousands of these workers who have spread out and seen different sites. How would they convey what they saw to the queen? <laughs> that is the question. And how would queen sift the relevant material? Un unless she knows exactly what each returning honeybee has told her 
and she has got that in her mind. And then another one, and another one. And until she receives all the reports and compares them, she doesn't decide to which side she should fly. Once decided, she makes a beeline for that side and goes straight to that, and all the colony flies along with, with her and go and start building the, the honeycomb in the next side. All this is amazing, but far more amazing is the way the scientists had, have learned the methodology of this. Full marks to these scientists and no marks to these atheists who know these things and yet they are atheists. They have no right to be atheists. In this case, I'll tell you briefly what happens. Each honeybee, when it returns to the comb, dances in a very special way. You know, directing herself exactly in line with the thing, the area which he, she has uh, scanned and the tree she has dis discovered to be a good site for the next honeycomb. She keeps facing that and then she dances and then she turns sometimes and does this and that and in during that dance she tells the queen that the site I have seen is exactly half a kilometer from here and the flowers around are plentiful and the site is well protected from outside invaders. And if we occupy that site, perhaps that would be ideal for the next honeycomb to be built. Then another one comes. She also makes the same dance, similar dance. And she tells a different direction. And the honeybee pres preserves all that information in her mind. And she says, no, not in that direction, but say a half a kilometer from that, on the left side or on the east side, <coughs> there is a rock in which there is a hollow. And in that hollow, if we build a honeycomb, that would be ideal because close to that rock, there are also flowers of this sort or that sort. <coughs> and then she also informs the honeybee that as far as our predators are concerned, there are very few in that area. And the honeybee says, yes, okay. Thousands of workers having scanned all the area around, return with their own specific messages, and they understood. Who taught this dance? And still, the scientists who have learned this art, they cannot understand exactly what the dance conveys. But they suspect that because all the information is conveyed, and the dance is a very specific dance in, you know, technically, it's a highly involvement set of movements. She turns slightly left, slightly right, she flutters her wings in a special way, and then sometimes she turns back and does fantastic things. And the honeybee understands, and at last, she has made up her mind. Then I said she goes, you know, in a bee line, straight heading for that side. And the, all the colonies swarms and goes along with her. And they start working immediately, building the honeycomb, taking all the protective measures and so on. Now, show us, show me one animal in the entire world which has built in a built-in system of 
a language which she herself has not made. The whole package is created and somehow entered into the system of expression of that honeybee. Honeybee is the only insect about which the Holy Quran says, O Prophet, your Lord, reveal to the enemy to search for high trees or mountain rocks or uh, the, the twining, you know, not the bushes, but uh, all the vegetative growth, which like uh, gourd and other things, twine around things, along trees or posts. So they go on building, they, they're growing their stem in a round way, either moving from right to de left or left to right. And they enter, they twine along some long post, tall post, or tall tree. The Holy Quran says, and we also taught honeybee to search for them and always build her home at a lofty place, never on the ground. Does any honeybee act contrary to this? Right from the ancient times, they always build their houses high above. There's so much more to be said, but I'll briefly remind you that honeybee is just like an ordinary fly. The same insect, the same sort of wings. And that fly falls on filth, builds their home on refuse. And she is the carrier of disease. And this fly builds her house far away from land. The insects and other filthy things cannot in any way interfere with her way of life. And she is a means of cure, according to the Quran. One is a means of spreading disease, the other is a means of cure. And the one who is the means of cure is mentioned in the Quran as we reveal to her to do this, to do that, to do that, to do that, not to do this. Now the scientists, unfortunately not the Muslim scientists, but the Christian scientists, atheist scientists, have worked so hard on supporting the Quranic version without realizing what they're doing. Maybe they might have hesitated if they knew what they were working for. They're diligently serving the cause of the Quran and this little verse which speaks of the honeybee. So we were talking of languages. Honeybee is capable of expressing everything she has observed in a manner, as I told you, no other animal can. So this is how God teaches languages. Every animal has her own language, but no animal evolves in those languages which are taught to him. That is the point. So where is the sign of evolution in language? In the entire one billion years of animal evolution, there is not a single sign of evolution in languages. The languages are taught and then we stick to them. That is all they have got. And the languages may be highly complicated. 
like the language of the Hanibi. But still, it is a package deal for them. They have not evolved since a million years. They do exactly the same thing. So, when Allah says, we taught man the language, the evidence is there. <laughs> no sign of any evolution in language. God must have taught. And when he taught, then the language began to differ and grow. And they differed from each other and gave birth to other languages. This is also claimed in the Holy Quran. The language was, was taught because otherwise man could not have communed with Allah. And man could not have taken the final step into a world of meanings which the animal kingdom does not even dream of. They see what they see and in their own environment they live and spend all their lifetime. But none is capable of realizing what's happening 20, 10 billion apart, 10 billion light years apart, or how the sun is made, how the moon is created, other parts of the earth, the geography of earth, and all the different animals and things, they have no idea, <laughs> absolutely. Only they see what they confront, and that's all. So it is the language which started all this. And also some other things which the Holy Quran mentions, of course. So the difference between man and the animal kingdom is so wide, unbelievably wide, that it could not have been created by the evolution which is non-existent before it. So it had to be created by Allah. How he did it, we don't know. He does. Right? <coughs> he also tells in which direction is the mouth of that site. That cave or that, uh, you know, opening in the, hollow. In the tree, hollow in the tree. That, which way it is directed and how deep it is. Uh -huh. 